Uh, welcome to those of you who are not <clears throat> practicing democracy today or at this moment. Um, so I said I wouldn't. I said I wouldn't cover anything new today. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna do a couple of examples. I'm gonna do a related rape problem. Um, and I'm gonna do uh, something with uh, the mean value theorem. So uh, let's get started, shall we? <clears throat> I can't pull off the green. So, um, Okay, um, so here's a problem. This problem should help you with the homework, I think. Um, a fruit fly flying in a circle, um, uh, radius three meters. Um, it is uh, noon. No, its shadow is directly below it because it is the solstice and it is on the tropic and it is noon because that's how shadows work, right? Oh, you haven't replied to my email. If I were you, I would reply to my email. Um, also, if you're wondering, um, if if you if I send you an email uh, about the oral homework and you haven't seen it, you could go into Moodle and if your grade for the oral homework is a zero, that means I'm trying to get your attention. <clears throat> it's just one of you today, so okay. So um, you have a a fruit fly flying. Uh, and it's flying if it um, if it makes a a full turn every second. How fast is its shadow moving? Um, when um, Okay, so so that's the problem. There's a fly in a moving in a circle at a certain speed. How fast? So there's a circle, and there's a fly. And it's moving, and the shadow is directly underneath it. You've never received an email? Well, then email me, and I'll reply to your email. Could be should have. Okay. Are my emails going to spam? Uh, so there's the shadow. Um, so um, I think my intuition says that as the as the fly is moving in the circle, uh, the shadow should be doing something like this, right? Should be going left and right. So it's moving at some speed. Um, 
and according to the problem, the, this radius is three meters. Um, oh, and it's doing, um, it's doing one full turn. every uh, second, it's going, it's going really fast. Okay, um, is the problem clear? All right, um, so I mean, if you, of course, if you haven't looked at the homework, you wouldn't know how this has to do, but the homework also has a circle and a related race problem. So uh, hopefully we can learn something about circles. So um, if I, so not a lot of data in this problem, basically I already wrote everything. Um, but the thing with geometry problems is you can start drawing quantities on your picture and, and then it's hard to know when to stop. Um, so one thing, so for example, which word? Probably one of, one of the handwritten ones. I'm sorry, I meant like, I was responding to Matthew. Responding to what? I was, I was just joking with Matt in the chat, I'm sorry. Oh. Sorry. Well, it makes sense that I was, I know my handwriting is not amazing. I'm just aiming for legible. Okay, um, so probably I want to put a, I want to put coordinates here. So, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna put the coordinate axis in the place that is the most that makes everything the easiest. So that's probably um, putting the origin over here and making putting the axis like this. Unless anyone has a better suggestion. Please do, because otherwise I have to keep going like this. Where do I put coordinate axis? Here. <clears throat> Where do I put the origin? Shadow. Like pretty much where the shadow is on the line. Where the shadow is on the line, uh, that's not bad, but I think I can make my life easier than doing it on the shadow. Would the shadow then become the diameter? The shadow becomes the diameter. I guess the trajectory would be the diameter, yeah. Um, but that's true wherever I put the the origin. Okay, I want to put it in the center of the circle. Um, I feel like we're very well acquainted with this circle that um, this circle that lives in the origin.
what am I saying? Uh, much better than if I put the circle on top of the of the origin. That way, I can give the fly some x y coordinates, and they're gonna they're gonna look recognizable. Uh, I mean, they would look. It would be okay if I put the the origin in the shadow, but there's no there's no reason to. There's really no reason. <clears throat> so, so how can I measure the the speed of the shadow? What quantity should I be looking at? What length? Uh, yeah, the top be like zero three. Zero three. Uh, but what am I? You know, sure meters. Uh, but I'm I'm asking from where to where do I measure? I need to make. You know, I can't say the shadow is one meter. I need to say like it's one meter from somewhere. Um, well, since we said at the origin, um, the origin zero zero. So then you would just. Uh, move up or down or left or right with like th by three meters since it's at the origin and it's going to be moving in three meters in whatever direction. So you're saying measure from the center and measure the distance from the center. And that's, yeah, I, I think that's how we should do it. Um, So, okay, I can measure the horizontal distance. Um, from uh, the center. Okay, um, so, let me, let me draw this again. <clears throat> so I have, a circle of radius three meters. And I have, um, and here I have a point, which is distance X. And then the, the fly, as it's flying, it has coordinate, uh, let's say X, Y. So, um what is the what is the quantity I'm looking for? Is it like the rate of change in relation of the fly to the shadow? It, it is the, the rate of change, but the rate of change of which which uh, letter is it, is it extra y or is it a different letter that I haven't written down? Uh, could it be why? Why? <clears throat> so um, it's the speed at which this, the shadow is moving. X, Shelly says X. Okay, so I have one, one answer for uh, each. Um, I read that it's X. The, the distance the shadow is traveling is X. Um, so the rate of change in the distance the shadow is traveling is going to be the speed of the shadow uh, of the shadow. Uh, so the speed is the derivative. Um, and this is what I want to find. Wait. 
what dx dt is um, at a particular moment. OK, so, um, so what now? Um, so I need, so it's a related race problem. So I'm, I'm asked for the speed of something, the, the speed of x, uh, which x is changing. And then I want the, uh, and I, I should know the speed at, at which something else is changing. So what is it that I, that I know the rate of change of? This is tricky. But uh, the hint is how, uh, like how fast the shadow is moving. Wait, no. Wait, no, sorry. Uh, like how, what, what is it like the thing goes by like every second, like one full turn every second? One full turn every second. So that's telling me the speed, right? But I need to relate that to a particular quantity. And I'm going to, so this is not really telling me the, the rate of change of x or y, at least directly. Um, so I probably need to come up with another quantity to deal with the rate of change, uh, the, the speed at which you're turning. How do you measure the speed at which the speed of something is, is turning? What units do you use? Can you find the circumference? I can find the circumference is, so, okay. Um, let's see if this helps. Um, oh. Doing the thing. The radius is three meters. So the circumference is going to be um, two pi times the radius. So it's six pi meters. So 18 and a half or something like that. Um, so I guess. Um, speed of, so the speed is six pi meters divided by one second. So it's um, well, six pi meters per second, but that's not very helpful. Um, that's even misleading, I think, because that's not here. The speed is not the rate of change of, of any quantity really. Because because it's not moving in a line, you know. If you're if you're moving in a, I mean, the rate of change is the total distance traveled. But this is hard to relate to anything else in the problem. So I don't want to use this. Um, although maybe with this information, you can guess or watch or what the answer should be. But that's a good point, shall we? Um, so, how do you put coordinates on a circle? If I draw a circle and I draw points here, what are the x and y coordinates of this circle? Because you've done this a million times in your life. What if the circle had radius one? So if the circle has radius one, I can call can it the unit circle. able to use the circle? Use what? The, would we be able to use the unit circle to find the coordinates? Well, this is a unit circle. Uh, so okay, probably, well then, this looks like pi over four from the angle it's at. So I probably see that x, y is like square root of two over two, square root of two over two, right? Okay, what if the angle was theta?
because mm -hmm. I was trying to draw a random point. How did you get square root of two over two? I just have the um, unit circle memorized. But, but I'm confused. Are you talking about like the special angles, like 45 degree angles? I, but I think but the, something in the special angles, like cosine and the sine. Right. I, I feel like. I feel like you didn't know what I was asking because obviously if you tell me the answer, it's because you know you're computing the cosine and the sine. So um, very useful thing for a thing that's moving in a circle uh, is since we know trigonometry to to take to give something a new letter, which it, and well, not that angle, probably to look at at the angle it's turned and give it a letter. <clears throat> so, um, because that way, because because the thing, if you're turning, the thing is if you're turning, the, the angle is changing, um, it, it always has the same rate of change. Um, and, and I can tell you what the rate of change is for the angle very easily. So, um, x, y, uh, so these are the coordinates in the unit circle. Okay, so I guess new picture. I have a circle and the fly is turning with an angle theta and the radius is three meters. So, uh, well, if the radius is three meters, so uh, maybe I'll draw it here. That means that I have three meters here, an angle theta, x and y. So I can write x and y using sine and cosine for sure. Um, so that's one thing I have. And then the second thing I have is if one full turn is one second, then I know the rate of change is theta. And this is gonna get me what I want. So, um, so what's, let's, let's do, okay. um, so looking at this, so looking at this, um, at this triangle, well, uh, the cosine of theta is the opposite over the adjacent and the sine of theta is the, the not the opposite, ugh, the opposite over the hypotenuse and the, Oof, I'm just saying I'm, I'm really not. So <laughs> the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. The cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Uh, so this means that y is three times the sine of theta and x is three times the cosine of theta. So that's some relation between my quantities. That I could, for example, take derivatives off. This makes me happy. And I could also, uh, okay. So if I'm, if I'm making, uh, if I'm making a full turn in one second, what does that mean about the, the speed of change of the angle, the, the rate of change of the angle? What does the angle change by in one second? Uh, isn't it like three cosine of theta, three times cosine of theta? No, three times cosine of theta. That's the uh, that's the x coordinate. 
So I'm saying if you start, well, you start anywhere in the circle. Say you start here. Um, what is theta? Oh, what did I just write the, an the answer? You start with theta equals zero. Uh, and then you make one full turn. What is theta after one full turn? 360. Okay, it, it is 360, but if I'm. Hmm. It is 360, it is 360, uh, but I, I'd rather use radians and I'll tell you why in a second. Um, this is honestly, degrees are, are easy to understand. And if you, you know, if you draw an angle to me, I think that's 45 degrees. I don't think it's pi over four, but if I want to compute something, I know I should be writing pi over four because otherwise it's complicated. Um, my life is harder. So the rate of change of, of theta is two pi radians per second because one full turn is two pi radians per second. Okay, so with what I wrote in this slide, uh, I can solve the problem. I can find, remember, I needed to find the XDT. So I, I can find the XDT if I know there's a relation between X and theta, and I know the, the derivatives of theta respect to T. Turns out the equation for Y doesn't matter at all. So um, so just copying what I have. So so this thing I wrote. Um, writing x and y as the sine of the angle and the cosine. This is very useful every time you have something moving in a circle, which is what you have in the homework, which is why I'm doing this problem to try to help you out. Uh, so probably a cosine and sine are gonna help you um, do, the, do the homework problem. Okay, so what I wrote in the previous slide is that I know that x is three cosine theta Um, I know that the derivative of theta respect to time is two pi, and I'm trying to find the x dt. So uh, what do I do? What do I do for all of these related rate problems? Negative three sine x. I have no idea how you got that. You took it seems like you took a derivative of something. But what am I what derivative am I supposed to take? Oh boy, you haven't started the homework yet. <clears throat> um you're supposed to take Derivative respect to time on both sides. So I have the dx dt, and now I have to use the chain rule because there's no there's no t there. That's a function of theta. So that's going to be the derivative of this function respect to theta times the derivative of theta respect to t. And if you don't write d theta dt at the end from the chain rule you're gonna run into trouble. So what's the derivative of three cosine, or well, the derivative of, of three cosine theta? I think it's what Matthew was is, was saying in the chat. The, uh, the three just stays there because it's multiplying and cosine becomes negative sine when you take the derivative. And now I have d theta dt. So now I would need to solve for dx dt. 
and that's done uh, because it's already it's already solved. It's by itself. So um, dx dt. Um, oh, so I should mention the derivative of cosine is sine. This is this is why we use radians. Derivative of cosine is sine only in radians. If you if you want to take derivative in degrees, the chain rule says um, that this is uh, pi divided by one eighty times the derivative you think it is. So it's just, it's never good to do this. It's just so annoying. Um, so um, what we should do is just take the derivative in radians and never ever try to write sine and cosine in, in degrees. Um, so we, we, it would turn out to be correct, but we would have to deal with this and, and just, there's no reason to ever do this, um, to ever make your life complicated like this. Okay, so now, uh, well, I know that d theta dt is two pi. So I guess the question is what is theta? Uh, and if I know what theta is, I'll be done. Wait, how did you get two pi? Uh, from from the little square here in the in the corner. Oh, okay. So we have to go back and read the problem um, to figure out what theta is supposed to be. So there's a, the thing is moving in the circle and it's asking what the speed is at the highest point. So what's the part of the problem telling us what theta is? Wouldn't it be pi over two? It is pi over two. Um, because the thing is, the, the, I need to figure out where theta is from the fact that the fly is at the highest point when I'm trying to measure this. Um, at the highest point, this angle indeed is pi over two. So uh, just copying that again, the x dt is negative three sine theta times two pi. And the highest point is theta equals pi over two. So the answer is negative three sine of pi over two um, times two pi. And we know we know our special angles. We know the sine of 90 degrees is one. So this is negative six pi meters per second. So um, So does this make sense? Is this, um, does this seem like a believable answer? So the fly is here and the shadow is here and this is moving at negative six pi meters per second, which by the way, um, is the same as the, as the speed we computed, we computed yesterday using, uh, shall we say idea of measuring the circumference. So 
This is believable. Should it be negative? I mean, I guess since it's going counterclockwise, it should be. Was I told that it was going counterclockwise? I mean, that's the way it looks. Is the way it looks? Well, the arrow is going counterclockwise. Well, but okay, so then the question is, did I draw the arrow the way I should have? Um, no, Matthew just says no. But I'm not sure what to. Uh, so I'm going to assume to everything. So, okay. I think, so I do, I, I do everything counterclockwise because when you draw a unit circle, the angle uh, turns counterclockwise, but it doesn't, uh, if the, if the fly, it doesn't matter at all. If the fly is, is turning, well, the thing is, if I go like this, this to you looks clockwise, but to me it looks counterclockwise. So if it looks like the, the, if in your coordinates, the fly is moving clockwise instead of counterclockwise, just look at it from the other side. Uh, so anyway, the speed, the speed that I'm being asked is just six by meters per second uh, because I don't care about the direction. I wasn't asked about the direction. Uh, but I mean, I wouldn't say it's wrong. You say the answer is negative. Uh, and that's it. Um, I, yeah. Well, related weight problems are hard. Um, that's just life. Math is hard. Okay. Uh, there's. Wait, so then on like the homework, would uh, that be different since it's like one meter above the ground? Mm -hmm. So like, how would we go about, would we just like, would it just end up with, I'm trying to, uh, I'm confused, like how would we approach that? Because would we end up having an, a triangle that extends outside the circle? Uh, what I would do in the homework is you're standing here. I would, um, if, you're, if you're standing here, I would use this angle and I would draw, I would draw a triangle, yeah. I would try to draw this triangle. It's a right triangle. And the distance you're looking for is going to be the hypotenuse. I think that's how you spell that. Uh, so if you can find if you can find the these sides. Um, if you're writing something, we can't. Well, at least I can't see. Ooh, thank you. So in the homework problem, there's a Ferris wheel, and you're standing underneath it, and you're being asked about the distance to a, a cabin. A cabin. What are the things in the first wheel called? I have no idea. A thing in the first wheel. A person going around in it. Uh, so you, you care about this distance in the homework problem. And my hint to measure that is to, to use the same angle we just used and think of the rate of change of that angle. And using that angle, try to find the, the short size of, of this right triangle and then use the Pythagorean theorem.
Okay, so I'm going to let you think about that, and you can come back and ask me about the homework later. Um, <clears throat> it's not, I mean, I'm not saying you're going to look at my hint and you're going to, it's going to instantly make sense how to do it. You have to think about um, what the sites, uh, what the sites are um, and see if you can figure it out much more rewarding if you do things by yourself. Um, and you can appreciate it more if I, if, even if I if I end up telling you how to do it, you appreciate it more if you've thought about them yourselves too. I mean, not, I'm not saying necessarily you're gonna be jumping with joy, I'm saying you're gonna understand it better. Uh, if, if if you if you're told a problem and then instantly told a solution, then um, then you don't get what the important part is. I'm gonna close the lines because I can't see anything. <clears throat> All right. Stupid winter time. I hate it. <clears throat> I have another problem um, that I still want to still want to talk about today, which I thought was really fun from the book. Um, there are two runners. Um, in the same race, they tie. So they start and and at the exact same time um, so is there a moment in the race um, when they are both uh, running at the exact same speed so the answer well the answer is yes um, So, um, so I had never thought about this until it's in the book. Um, so you have so there's two people running. There's a red person and a blue person. I could try to draw them running, but. That would take a while and it wouldn't be, I wouldn't do it that well. So at the beginning and at the end, they're at the same time, but of course people don't run at the same speed and they take some time to accelerate. Um, and so, so the speed is not constant. So they're not always, um, they're not always at the same points. They're not always running at the same speed. But somehow, but at the end they they do tie. So at the end uh, they're at the same place. Um, so what so what happens here somehow is that there is a moment at which they're both running at the same speed, which is I feel like it's surprising. Like if one of them starts up faster and then ends up slower, I guess. One of them starts up faster, but at the end of the same time, at some point, they have to be slower than the other one. I don't know. Maybe this is not surprising to you. So if I, I think what I should do is draw a graph of the distance over time. And then one of them, so, what I know is that they're both at the beginning and at the end at the same moment. So, um, let me draw, let me show you the drawing I did. So, um, so here's two graphs. Just um, 
I just wrote some equations that would give me some graphs. I don't know. It doesn't matter much which one they are. And then somewhere, uh, so if I look at the same, so the, the time, oh, I drew the, I, I mix distance and time here. Uh, I was supposed to, oh, I meant to do it the other way around. Um, of course, I, I want to write the distance as a function of time always. Um, so if I look at the same time, that look that means I'm looking at there are two positions with the same x coordinate. And then the speed, as you know very well, the speed is the slope of the tangent line. So for example, at this moment, the red runner is going faster than the blue one because uh, her line is more, her line is steeper. Her slope, her, her speed is faster. The blue one, so for example here, the, uh, the red one is somehow kind of jumping because she's going faster and slower and faster and slower. And here the, the, the blue one, is going faster. So the, the claim is that at some, there's a point here. So here's the, here's the derivatives. There's a point here at which they are, uh, these two tangent lines are parallel. And I guess I can't believe it if I move the point very slowly that somewhere around here, they're probably parallel. And then it could be more than one point. So here they look pretty parallel. Still, the, the blue one looks steeper. Oh, no, it just moves all the way around. Um, okay, so the way I, I just wrote the equations for the tangent line, which you know perfectly well. Anyway, you can go in there if you want to play with it. So, oof, two minutes. Oof. Um, if I say, um, here's uh, runner number one, uh, blue, and here I have red, and I call his, uh, her distance. I don't know if I'm assigning genders consistently. Runner number two has um, distance g of t at time t. So what I'm saying is is there some C for which f of f prime of C oh, I already wrote that for which f prime of C equals g prime of C? Is that the case? Um and this is starting to look like the mean value theorem. The mean value theorem tells you somewhere, uh, somewhere at some point, there is um, there is something about the derivative of a function that I know, even even though I don't know when a thing happens, I know that it happens at some point. So. Um, So how could I, how could I rewrite f prime equals g prime in a way that looks more like the mean value theorem? For example, it's just the derivative of one function. I have no time to ask you this question. Um, what I should do is I should look at f minus g which is the distance between, it's the distance between the two runners. So this is the same as saying that f minus, the derivative of f minus g is zero. So now I'm saying, um, is f prime, um, uh, let's call this a, a, x, x.
and I should be using row theorem. So uh, maybe I'll, I'll finish it tomorrow, I guess. I accept my fate of finish it, finishing this tomorrow. All right. Um, well, that's all I have time for. <clears throat> Let me know if there's any questions or uh, why is that safe?